Jesus. It is good to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Wow, it's good to see each and every one of y'all in the house of the Lord. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to have some church in here. Are you? I'm excited to have some church up here. Um, this coming Wednesday, I want to make the announcement right quick uh, before our um, dear friend leads us in worship. Oh, this coming Wednesday, uh, we will not be having our regular program. Uh, we will be doing our three nights. Woo! Three nights. Come on, somebody. Three nights of phone faith revival. Are you ready for that? Phone faith revival. And uh, we got so many participants participating in it. So many hosts, rather. And uh, we're going to have a great time. And Sister A is it Angel? I think it's Angel. Yes. Sister Angel was in Florida. We'll be hosting Wednesday. Thomas is Thursday. And Brother Thomas is Thursday. Not the Thomas, you know, everybody's been thinking about one kid. Not that kind of Thomas. Okay. I won't give my last name because we don't do last names on here. But uh, <clears throat> the uh, Thomas from Phone Face. He's the one that said Phone Face was his life thing. Okay. Okay. Um, he was the one that was in a lot of addiction. Let's just say it that. Let's just put it that way. A lot of addiction. So Thomas is hosting Thursday. Angela is hosting Wednesday, and Kathleen is hosting Friday. So I, yeah. But I also, also want to give a welcome, a warm welcome to, excuse me, to our line leader, Leonore Roth. Uh, she has been an immense, an immense, an immense part of our community, of our not only blind community, but helping others get to phone faith for presentations. And she brings on a lot of great presenters, and I will not say what religion they are, uh, because we don't discuss race, religion, or politics on this channel. Uh, but we are Pentecostals and Christ followers, amen? We're Christians and Christ followers. Everybody has a religious background, but we will not mention any uh, religious names, okay? Everybody has all backgrounds and their own beliefs. Let's just put it that way. Phone Faith welcomes all backgrounds. We're non-denomination faith-based ministry, and Phone Faith welcomes all backgrounds of uh, of uh, religion, all backgrounds. And so I want to uh, give a huge thank you to my line leader and specifically to our program coordinator, our program coordinator, coordinator, uh, Dr. Rock. She has been a huge part of my, she's been a huge part of my life, been a huge part of phone faith since uh, 20, what is it, 2021, 2020, 2020, something like that, but anyway, anyway, underway with the worship music, and uh, we're going to let our dear friend lead us to worship, come on. Thank you. 
we are going to have a very special guest, baking and bread, uh, four loaves of bread. We are uh, needing to feed uh, some of the neighbors who don't even have food. And so we will be doing four loaves of bread uh, for the neighbors who need to be blessed. You know, God tells us to bless our neighbors whether we like them or not, right? Whether we know them or not. You say, well, I don't know you. I don't know the neighbors in the complex. It don't matter if you don't know the neighbors in the complex. What matters is, is that God wants to bless you by you giving. Because remember, the Bible says that God blesses those who give, right? What does the Bible say? The Bible says that if you give. Yep. Come on, brother. The Lord is uh, faithful and just to bless you. That's what the Bible says, right? And we have to participate in that. You say, how do I participate in that? How, how much do I need to pitch in? Well, you don't need to pitch in nothing. Right. To have us do four loaves of bread, you don't need to pitch in. It's free of charge. Now, not everything in this world is free of charge. Okay, I will tell you, smart apps on your smartphones, for those who have smartphones, how many of you guys have smartphones? Let me see your hands. All right, how many of you guys don't have smartphones? Okay. <laughs> okay, how many, of you, how many of you guys might want a smartphone? I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're not here to vote on smartphones, okay? Listen, smartphones are great. But you better be careful of what apps you get. Whoops. Because I've gotten so many apps where they've charged me 80 to, it was it 80 something dollars? 80 something dollars. They charged me for an app I didn't even download on my phone, y'all. They charged me for some lingo, some learning Spanish and stuff app. I didn't even, uh -uh. I didn't even have it on my phone. I don't even got it now. I don't have it. I don't have it and I never will get it. Okay, you guys better be careful. If you're wanting to do, uh, <clears throat> if you're wanting to do, uh, uh, apps on your phone, you better ask, uh, because you don't know what plan you could be on, all right? Even though you have an unlimited plan, that still don't mean, oh, I just get whatever up I want. No. You need to ask your parents, if you're living under their roof, you need to ask them, hey, can I get this app? Can I not? You know, so you guys make sure, your blind viewers, make sure uh, you're blind people, because I know a lot of people get apps without their parents' permission. You need to make sure you ask your parents before you get apps on your smartphones, like uh, uh, Signal and, um, uh, not Yellow, what's that called? What's that other walkie-talkie app called? What's that called? Does anybody know? Something cello, hello, something, signal, and, uh, uh, zello. Zello! That's it! Zello! That's it! Make sure you ask your parents before you download any apps like that, because they might say it's free on the app store, and that's the thing I hate about the app store. They might say it's free of charge, but you don't know for sure if it's free of charge. Right. God says everything is free of charge to him, amen? God says everything is free of charge to him. And so we never know what's free in this world and what's not. But you know what? The Bible, the good book, is free of charge. You know why it's free of charge? You know why the Bible is free of charge? Because God's word is free of charge. Amen? God's word is free of charge, and we have to live by the free charged word. Amen? The free of charge. It costs zero dollars and zero cents to read God's word. Amen? Even on your Echo Dots. How many of you guys have smart speakers? All right. How many of you guys don't have a smart speaker, but you plan to get one? <laughs> Let's vote who gets the most smart speaker in their household. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <clears throat> but, I want you to turn with me to uh, Psalm uh, 25, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 25, verse 1 and 2. 
uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me. Those who have smartphones, those who have a Bible app, or those who are taking notes uh, in their apps or in their journal even, let me know uh, so that, uh, not let me know. Um, turn your, turn your um, ears to the Bible real close because we're going to be talking about a topic that not everyone likes to discuss, okay? <coughs> and then Proverbs chapter 5, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 5 <coughs> and verse <coughs> 6. Excuse me, folks, you got to forgive me. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 6. I want you to turn with me. And let's stand for the reading, for the reading of God's word, because that's important that we honor God's word, right? Right? It's important that we honor God's word. So, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. We're going to start there. Trust in the Lord with all, not half, not some. That's right. Trust in the Lord with all. Your heart. And lean not. This is from the original King James Version. KJV. I'm reading out of the King James today. KJV, that is. And lean not on your own understanding. Amen? But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge who? Acknowledge the Lord. Yep. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. That's one scripture. Psalm 25, verses 1 and 2. Look at it with me. Unto you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, I, I'm sorry, not unto you. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. <clears throat> oh my God, I trust in you. Now, when you say, oh my God, I trust in you, that ain't taking his name in vain, okay? I'm just letting you know. For those who do take God's name in vain, it's not good, okay? No. It, it's, it's not, it's not uh, good to take God's name in vain, but in this kind of a passage, you're saying you're crying out to God, amen? Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Oh my God, I trust in you. How many of you want to trust in him this morning? Amen. Lord, I pray for your word that it gets preached this morning, not from my lips, but from your calling of what you wanted me to preach on this morning. I pray everyone who hears this, everyone who is under the sound of my voice today, everyone who is watching online, anyone who is listening today to this video, to this sermon and this message, I pray, oh Lord, that you'd speak to them. You'd speak to their hearts, you'd speak to their minds, you'd speak to their spirit, Lord. Lord, let it not be from my mouth that I am anointed to preach, but let it be from your words and what you want me to say, Lord. Let it be that your grace and your anointing would fill my mouth to preach this word about trusting in you. Lord, because that's what you want us to do, Lord. So we give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated in God's presence today. Wow. You may be seated. <clears throat> Alexa, what time is it? The time is 11.42 a.m. <laughs> so, we are not going to talk about any other passage than this. Okay? Because I really, <clears throat> I want us to... Uh, let me get the answer. I want us. <coughs> I want us to talk about this sort of a passage in a much clearer way, so that you, as believers, 
of Christ, not just us members, okay? But so that you, believers of Christ, can take home the word of the Lord, amen? So that you can take it in your heart with you, amen? I want to <coughs> draw your attention to this subject, trust in me. Trust in me. You know, when we think about trusting, it's not like we are thinking about trusting in our parents. Though we do need to trust in our parents. So, amen? Some of you are watching and, you've been, and some of you are looking at me like, whoa, that person's crazy. I don't know what they're talking about. When we think about trust, When I think about trust in my relationship with the Lord, and bear with the background noise, please, please, please bear with that background noise. That's just uh, one of our custodians is putting uh, false stuff up. So bear with that background noise. Mm -hmm. But when we think about trusting in the Lord, when we think about trusting physically, mm -hmm. We think, how can we trust? We think about how can we trust the Lord? How can we trust the Lord? How are we able to get a hold of ourselves to trust in the Lord? Well, in the passage of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Let's look at it for a minute. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay? He doesn't just say trust in the Lord with half of your heart. The writer of Proverbs. He says trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And like I said, bear with that background sound. It's okay. We ain't on phone plate. If we were on phone plate, there'd be way too much background noise. <laughs> I have to figure out a command to be the Lord. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, when we look at this passage, trust in the Lord. With all your heart. Hmm. Not half. Not some. But all of your heart. When we think about that passage, what do we think of? I love the writer of Proverbs the way he puts it. The way he puts that context. That way the writer of Proverbs puts That's that um in the biblical context. I love the way he says all of your heart, not half, not some, not two percent, not ninety-eight percent, no. Thousand percent. 
for sale. But anyway, God wants us to trust in Him. Can I get a witness today? Amen. God wants us to trust in the Lord. Bear with that, y'all. Bear with that. Don't, don't mind that. Um, <clears throat> God wants us to put our trust in Him. In Psalms 25, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in you. Mm. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over you, over me. When we cry out, the psalmist David says this. King David was the king of Israel. Right? King David was the king. And we find him crying out to the Lord in that verse in Psalm 25, verse 1. To you, O Lord, I listen my soul. Oh my God. <coughs> I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Alexa, what time is it? It's 11.50 a.m. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over you. We say, oh my God, I trust in you. We are not talking... We're not taking his name in vain for number one. We are crying out with King David saying, Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let me not be timid. Right. Let me not be overwhelmed with trusting in you. Let me be free to trust in you. Let me be sure. Look at it with the Proverbs chapter five, 3 and 5. The writer of Proverbs tells us to trust in, in the Lord. Excuse me. With all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own thinking. On your own part. Lean not on your parents. Right. right lean not on your parents. Lean not on your kids. Your grandkids, your challenges, your trouble, your struggles, your trials, your tribulations. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. When he says trust in the Lord, what does that even mean? Look at it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. You know, sometimes 
I'm on there every Wednesday on phone fake, and I feel like preaching on Start Strong what this means. They don't have preachers on phone fake today. Like they should. You say, well, we have great presenters. That don't mean nothing. Just because you have great presenters don't mean they can't preach like I do. Right. Now, I'm not trying to make fun of the presenters. I'm not trying to make fun of the preachers that come on both things. But they need to get a little bit more fire. So what do you mean by that? You need to get a little bit more trust. Yep. That's it. Trust in God to let you preach how I preach. It's not about us. It's about the Lord, honey. Yeah. Now, I know we're not supposed to say, honey, honey, darling, sweetheart, on phone faith. I know we're not supposed to do that. That's a big no. Someone almost got in trouble with me the other day by saying, how old are you? We don't ask people's ages on this channel or phone face. We don't do that. We don't ask people's ages. We don't send friend requests on YouTube or phone face. We don't do that. We have to trust in the Lord with all what? All your heart. All your heart. Lean not on what? On your own thinking. Lean not on your own presentation. Right. 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 Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. What? The right of Proverbs says, acknowledge him. Acknowledge who? Acknowledge the Lord. You don't get very many people today, not just on farm face, but on other conference lines like this one. You don't get very many people today who are talking about trust. And if God is leading you to change the program, If God is leading you to change the schedule, not just on a line, not just on a conference line, but in your church, mm. you got to trust Him. you got to trust Him. Mm. Why? You say, why do I need to trust in the Lord? Why can't I trust in myself to change it? Because it's not about giving yourself the glory. <coughs> if I host up and mic on phone face, it ain't about myself. It ain't about giving myself the glory. Oh, I did a good job hosting good. Oh, I did this, I did that. <coughs> oh, I need to work on this, I need to improve on that. That's just trained you. It's a hosting training. I'm not thinking about myself. Right. <clears throat> right. I'm not trusting in my line leader to tell me, well, you did a good job. Well, you need to improve this. You need to improve that. You need to that. Mm. Da -da -da -da. You need to improve on that. You need to not do this on the line. Don't do this. Don't say this. Don't do it. Mm. If you are committing. To trust in the Lord. Right. I'm a host in training, but that don't mean I have to be great every single Friday. That don't mean, am I waiting on my line leader to call me? Of course I am. Right. Because I want to take constructive criticism from her for what God is telling her to tell me. Right. I want to take constructive criticism from her or from God, not from her just because I want her to call me, call me, call me. No, I want to take constructive criticism and trust in God for what she has to say. I don't want to be the one. I don't want to be the one to call her and say, oh, I'm sorry for this, I'm 
park a lot. And I was just, I was just saying, you know, no. I don't give myself the credit. Now, do I tell other hosts that I do, that they do a good job? Yes, I do. Why? Because God gets the glory on all the time. I'm not just telling the host they do a good job for their sake. No. Right. It's a difference between someone praising someone and giving credit to someone. There's a difference between the actions. Oh, you did a good job. How do you do that? How do you how do you know what to say when you host a pro Right. Right. It's about trusting in God, my friends. Mm. If you don't trust in God, what are you going to do? You're going to fall <clears throat> in the trap. You're going to fall in the trap. If I don't trust in God, if I don't pray every single Friday before I can even get on the phone and host, if I don't pray before I host open mic. What do you think that's going to lead me to? Do you think that's going to lead me to Christ? To trusting in Him? Or do you think I'm trusting in myself? Do you think I'm trusting in my line leader more than I am God? Mm. Listen, it's not about trusting in the host or the people. It's not about trusting in yourself. Remember, the writer of Proverbs says, we not on your own understanding. Amen? we got too many people today who are leaning on their own understanding, and that's what, not what the writer of Proverbs says to do. The writer of Proverbs says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not. Mm. You say, what does that word lean not mean? It means lean not. <laughs> How else you will put it? Right. Right. I don't lean on my own understanding on my line, on my program, every Friday because I'm, I, I, I'm a host in training. Do I lean on myself? Do I lean on my line leader? Do I lean on other hosts to tell me what to do, what not to do? No! Right. It's not about us, folks. It's not about us. It's not about trusting in ourselves. It's not about trusting for no fear. It's not about trusting in your neighbor. It's not about trusting in your parents. It's not about trusting in your relationship with your family. No, it's about trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not on your thinking, leaning not on your own understanding. It's about truth. you walk through the fire, you will not 
not be burned. Meshach, um, Rashak, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember those three men in the book of Daniel? Does anybody remember those three men in the book of Daniel? Where it says that God helped them out of that fire. They were walking in probably 600 degree fire. They were walking through the flames and that smoke flame. That fire was seven times hotter. Mm. Do you all remember that story? That Bible was set, that fire was seven times hotter. When I say seven times hotter, I don't mean hot like on the stove. <laughs> I don't mean hot as in overheated. No. That fire was seven times hotter. Hotter than the weather outside. But God wants us as followers of Christ. God wants you as a follower of Christ to trust in Him with all your heart. It don't matter whether you're doing the physical thing. It don't matter whether you're doing the spiritual thing. It don't matter whether you're cooking, cleaning, doing your household chores. No, it matters if you're trusting in the Lord with all your heart because He cares for you. He cares. Because He can do all the things that you would ask or imagine. He can turn your life around. You say, how can he turn my life around? I don't trust that. Listen. If you don't think God could turn your life around, you're not the right relationship. Right. Now listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking this very offense. Now I'm not saying to be criticizing. Because my mind leader always tells me all the time, I'm here to help you, not criticize you. Right. And I want to be helpful to people. I don't want to be criticizing. Mm. Criticizing means you're talking bad about them. Right. Right. Criticizing means that you're not talking the right way. That you're having a nasty attitude towards your host and your participants. Mm. Criticizing says, well, you did this, you did that. You didn't do this, you did that. No. We are not here to criticize people. We are here to help those who are lost. We're not here to judge. We're not here to criticize. But we are here to help those who are lost. And what do we have to do to help those who are lost? We have to trust in the Lord. We have to trust in God. You say, why do we have to trust in the Lord? I don't believe that. Mm. I don't believe what you're preaching makes sense. If honey, if you don't believe what you're what I'm preaching, believe what God's saying. Right. Right. Exactly. Why do we need to trust in God? Because He's the only source. <laughs> Excuse me. He's the only source of life. It can come. He's the only source of hope we can come to. Nobody else has hope. Nobody else can give you hope like God can. Oh, yes, they can. My mom gives me hope on hope. My parents, my 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 spouse, my children give me hope on God. They might give you words of encouragement, but they don't give you hope like God can. And if you're in that category where you're not in the right plan for your life, if you're in that category where you're not in the right person, then you're not really for the good. Listen, I'm, I'm not criticizing you again. I, I, I'm just saying from my perspective. I'm just saying from God's perspective. You're not in that right relationship. You're not trusting in the one who knows all things. You're not trusting in God. You're not trusting in God's help for your life. You're trusting in man. You're trusting in the world. You're trusting in your leaders. You're trusting in your government. Mm. You're trusting in your president, your vice president. That is so much what's going on in this world today.
not want you to go. You're in the wrong path of your life. You're not trusting like you should. Musicians and worship team, you guys can come on and do a song. We're going to close this part out. But listen, you're not thinking how you should be thinking. Well, how should I be thinking? I don't know how to thank you for I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know how to think. I don't know where to go, where to turn. If you don't know where to go, it's turn it. You say, that's me. I don't know where to go with turn. I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to think. I don't know. I don't know who to think. You don't know. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn to. I invite you to right now where you're at. Right now where you're at, I invite you to, to stand and lift your hands and receive what God has for you because Say, I don't know where to go. I, I don't know if I trust in this God or not. I trust in my own God. Well, if you trust in your own God, honey, you're not the way to trust. Your heart's not right. You're not trusting in the right path. in the right path and Jesus is your only hope. Jesus is your hope. If you're not in the right track, I want you to be on the right track today. So I want to invite you where you're at right now to stand. Whether you're watching this video, whether you're listening to it, I want to invite you to stand and say, God, I'm not right with you, but I need to be. There's things I've done in my life that I shouldn't have. I need to be on the right path. sing this song, I want you to ask Jesus to come back into your life, rededicate your life. If you don't know him for the first time, ask him to come into your life, because he is our living hope, amen? <coughs> Oh, 
uh, because the, a lot of people have been telling me that the video sounds muffled. Now I'm hoping this video that I'm recording from my camera app, I'm hoping this video will sound great. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have the opportunity to worship the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and give you his peace. Go in the grace of God, guys. We'll see you, and uh, we will talk to you guys later. And uh, don't forget, revival is this week on phone page, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There will not be any scheduled programs besides Monday and Tuesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is all evening programs. Uh, all evening programs are canceled because of revival. All right, so uh, those who want to know what the phone fake, I will post that in the description below. I will post the number because I know for heart. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to have approval. No, I'm just kidding. I have to have approval for other people's numbers, but I don't have to have approval for the phone fake. <clears throat> God bless you guys. You guys have a great day. And listen, remember to worship God while you can because it's good.